This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. In this particular part, we are going to study about uh, the Kepler laws. So there are basically three important Kepler laws. We are going to study those three laws one by one. So the first law is called as law of orbits. See, in this law states, uh, all the planets move in elliptical orbits with the sun situated at one of the foci of the ellipse, which means uh, it's an heliocentric theory. Uh, which means sun is at the center and all the planets revolve around the sun in an elliptical orbit. So the planets with a not move in circular motion, instead they move in an elliptical orbits. If sun is here, you know sun will be at the one of the foci of the ellipse. All the planets uh, will be revolving around the sun. Okay. In this figure, you can see drawing an ellipse, a string has its end fixed at points F1 and F2. The tip of the pencil holds the string thought and it is moved around this is how we can draw the ellipse see this law was a deviation from the copernican model which allowed only circular orbits as i told you before it's not that uh, planets move in circular orbits instead they move in elliptical orbits the ellipse of which the circle is a special case is a closed curve which can be drawn very simply as you can see in this figure select the two points f1 and f2 okay f1 and f2 how you we can draw ellipse take a length of a string and fix its ends at f1 and f2 by pins okay take the string and fix its end to f1 and f2 by pins with the tip of a pencil stretch the string taut and then draw a curve by moving the pencil keeping the string taut throughout so with the tip of the pencil fixed you can draw an ellipse clearly for any point to t on the ellipse, the sum of the distances from F1 and F2 is a constant. The sum of the distances from T, F1 and F2 is a constant. You can, can for any point which is considered on the ellipse. F1 and F2 are called as foci. This F1 and F2, they are called as foci. Join the points F1 and F2 and extend the line to intersect the ellipse at points P and A. As you can see, you just join this F1 and F2 and extend these two lines on either side to meet the ellipse at the points A and P. Okay. The midpoint of the line PA is the center of the ellipse. So, O is the midpoint of the line PA. We can write PO is equal to OS, OA since O is the midpoint and it is called the semi major axis of the ellipse. Okay. For a circle, the two foci merge into one and the semi-major axis becomes the radius of the circle. Okay, this is the first law of Kepler. Coming to the second law, the second law is uh, law of areas. The line that joins any planet to the sun 
sweeps an equal areas in equal intervals of time that is what the second law states okay the line you can see in this figure the line that joins any planet here we have considered the planet p the line that joins any planet to the sun okay it sweeps equal area in equal intervals of time this law comes from the observations that planets appear to move slower when they are farther from the sun than when they are nearer okay when uh, planets uh, are very far away from the sun you can see here the planet p it is you know it is little bit far away from the sun at in in this point it will move slow you know they appear to move slower when they are farther from the sun when they are nearer they move faster so in this particular figure the planet p moves around the sun in an elliptical orbit the shaded area is the area that is uh, delta a which is swept out in a small interval of time that is delta t so in equal time it uh, sweeps the equal interval of time when they are farther from the sun they move a little slower when they are nearer they move little faster so this is the the second law of kepler coming to the third law the third law of kepler is uh, law of periods what it says the square of the time period of revolution of a planet is proportional to the cube of the semi major axis of the ellipse traced out by the planet okay the square of the time period of revolution of a planet means uh, the time which is taken by the planet for one revolution the the square of that the square of the time period of revolution of a planet is that time it is uh, proportional to cube of the semi major axis of the ellipse now only we studied what is that semi major axis isn't it so it is proportional to cube of the semi major axis of the ellipse which is traced by the planet this is what the third law says the data from measurement of planetary motions given below confirm kepler laws of periods okay for it for different uh, planets here a is nothing but uh, semi major axis in units of 10 raised to 10 meters t is time period of revolution of the planet and uh, this q is uh, the quotient you can see here for uh, mercury it is 5.79 and t is 0.24 and q as i told you it is the quotient t square by a cube in units of uh, 10 raised to minus 34 year square m raised to minus 3 okay and uh, for different planet venus earth mars jupiter saturn uranus neptune pluto uh, given a t and q values and uh, we can compare these values and it also satisfies the law the law of areas can be understood as a consequence of conservation of angular momentum which is valid for any central force okay a central force uh, is such that the force on the planet is along the vector joining the sun and the planet okay the force is uh, along the line okay the force is uh, such that the force on the planet is along the vector joining the sun and the planet you just consider the sun at origin let the position and momentum of the planet be denoted by r and p 
sun is located you just assume sun is uh, located at origin okay and we are considering the planet the position and momentum of the planet is denoted by r and p the position as well as momentum of the what yes the position and momentum of the planet is represented by r and p respectively then the area which is swept out by the planet of mars m in term time interval delta t is delta a okay the area which is swept by the planet is uh, given by delta a in a time that is delta t okay then that area we can represent it by the equation that is given by delta a is equal to 1 by 2 r into v into delta Okay, hence uh, delta A by delta T is given by one by two R cross P because we can represent. Uh, v in terms of p and m because we know p is equal to m v isn't it and we can represent v is equal to p by m And we can represent delta A by delta T is equal to L that is R cross P L that divided by 2M where this L is nothing but what? Angular momentum. Isn't it? And uh, the v is the velocity and L is the angular momentum that is equal to R cross P. For a central force which is directed along R, L is constant as the planet goes around and hence delta A by delta T is constant according to last equation. This is the law of areas. Gravitation is a central force. And hence the law of area as uh, follows. Okay. Now let us solve a simple problem. So the problem is let the speed of the planet at the perihelion T in figure be VP and the sun planet distance SP be RP. Relate RP comma VP to the corresponding quantities at the apelion that is VA RA comma VA. Will the planet take equal times to traverse BAC and CPB? So here we have to refer a figure. So let us find the solution for this. See here we should uh, See the speed of the planet at the perihelion that is P at this point.
okay is vp and the sun planet distance is p this is rp relate rp and this vp to the corresponding quantities at the aphelion that is ra and va so will the planet take equal times to traverse bac bac and cpb cpb okay so the magnitude of the angular momentum at p is given by lp that is given by mp rp and vp since inspection tells us that rp and vp are mutually perpendicular similarly we can write la as uh, mp mass of that planet ra and va so from angular momentum of conservation we can equate these two mp rp vp is equal to mp r a v a so this mp mp get cancels we get vp by va is equal to ra by rp isn't it since we know ra is uh, greater than rp and vp is greater than va the area is sc bac bounded by the ellipse and the radius vectors sb and sa is larger than spbc from kepler's second law equal areas are swept in equal times hence the planet will take a longer time to traverse bac than cpb okay longer time to traverse bac than cpb